Just a nice, chunky, muddy water bass right there. Gosh, I love it. In bass fishing, there is nothing that is more of a hand-to-hand -hand combat with the bass than actually flipping or pitching your plastic or jig into some wood, getting that bite, setting the hook, and getting that fish out of there. It's, there's just something about it that is so fun. And today, I wanna to talk about five mistakes that a lot of anglers make when they are flipping and pitching wood specifically. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. This video is brought to you by the Deep Dive app. Today I have only had about two and a half hours to come out here and go fishing. And when I got to the lake, I actually pulled up the Deep Dive app. I selected the lake that I was fishing, as well as I put in the water temperature, the water clarity, all the data that I could input. After I did this, the app spit out some lures and strategies for me to start going out and catch bass now one thing that i saw was that the app told me to focus on the front one third of the creeks on this lake i'm going to be honest when i saw this i actually kind of ignored the front one third of the creek part because here in ohio we have had kind of a later spawn and so i thought that more fish would be towards the back of the creek so i actually went and i started fishing and i went to the back of the creek and lo and behold didn't catch anything. And as I started working out towards the top one third of that creek, I caught the biggest bass of the day, which wasn't a giant, but for this lake, that is a really solid fish. Long story short, I caught a better than average fish using a lure that the Deep Dive app suggested and in an area that the Deep Dive app suggested. Now there's a free version of this app and a paid version of this app. And if it interests you, click that link down below in the description and you can download it today. Now, one of the biggest mistakes that I see a lot of new anglers make, but even anglers that have been fishing a long, long time, is that anytime they are flipping and pitching wood cover, they will always peg their weight to their plastic bait. Now, while this does make it easier to fish a plastic in wood cover, I think that you are missing out on bites by always pegging that weight. If you do not absolutely have to peg a weight, then don't do it because I find that you get a lot more bites by actually not pegging your weight. That weight will actually kind of separate from the bait itself and it just makes that bait look really, really natural kind of gliding down through that tree. So a lot of times if I am fishing a bigger lay down that has really big branches on it, I don't peg that weight and I really find that I get a lot more bites. Now with that being said, there are a lot of times when you should peg your weight. And this is gonna be anytime I am fishing wood cover that is really, really branchy or sticky. If the branches of that lay down are less than an inch in diameter, a half inch, I mean, if you look behind me, there's a little lay down right there. It has a lot of little like twig-like branches on it. Those are the situations where you do want to peg your weight. Now, another huge mistake that almost all of us anglers make is overcomplicating our lure selection. I think that this is especially true when you are flipping and pitching wood cover because a lot of times when you are fishing in that wood cover, that bait just kind of flies down in front of that fish and he more or less bites it out of reaction. He doesn't necessarily bite that bait because he's like, oh, that color looks really good. I'm gonna go over there and bite it. It just sinks down past that fish's mouth and he just has to bite it. So I really like to to keep my plastic selection extremely simple. Right here, I have a beaver style bait. This is a Missile Baits D-Bomb. And right here, I have a crawl style bait. This is a Berkeley Chigger Crawl. I tend to use the crawl style bait when I'm fishing more off color water. And I tend to use the beaver style bait when I'm fishing in a little bit clearer water. And I basically have just two different colors of each of these baits. I have a natural color, like a green pumpkin or a green pumpkin blue. And then I have a dark color, like a black and blue or a black neon. Now, when I get to the lake, I'm probably going to pick one of those four and just start flipping with it. And once I actually kind of get into an area where I feel like there's a lot of fish, that's when I might start experimenting more with the soft plastic that I'm using. So until you find those fish, just keep your lure selection extremely simple. Once you find them, that's when you can start experimenting. Another mistake that I see a lot of anglers make that can really prevent them from catching more fish is if you flip or pitch your soft plastic into wood cover, and you get bit and you set the hook and you miss that fish like it just your bait comes back or you just completely miss that fish 
it's not over. A lot of times if you set the hook and miss a fish, as long as you don't actually get your hook into that fish, you can actually come back and catch that bass at a different time during the day. Some bass can be extremely territorial and they will stay in a really small confined area for a long period of time. So if you're flipping and pitching down the bank and you get bit and miss a fish, a lot of times if you let that area sit for a half hour, uh, an hour, two hours, you can come back and actually catch that exact same bass. Now I have actually purposefully done this while tournament fishing and we call this shaking a fish off. Years ago I was fishing a Bassmaster Open on Douglas Lake and during the practice of this event there was a dock that was on kind of a bluff bank and kind of underneath this dock there was a lay down. During practice I actually flipped a jig up underneath that dock into that lay down. I got bit and I actually shook that fish off. Now two days later in the last hour of that tournament I came back to that exact same dock with that lay down. I flipped in the exact same spot. I caught a two and a half pounder in the exact same spot where I had shaken that fish off. It called out my littlest fish and that one fish actually ended up being a $1,700 fish in this tournament. Without that fish, I would not have cashed a check in this tournament. Now, do I know that that fish was the exact same fish? No, but I think that it probably was. And so anytime you miss a fish or shake a fish off, a lot of times you can come back and catch that fish at a different time. Now, speaking of getting bit, one of the biggest mistakes that a lot of anglers make is that when they get bit in the area and catch a fish, they don't pick that area apart. I think us as anglers, we always kind of feel like the grass is always greener somewhere else. So even though we go into a little area and we get bit, we keep wanting to find that magical area where we can catch a lot of fish. And a lot of times if you get bit, even in a really small area, more than likely there's another bass really, really close. This happened to me today. Today I was out here fishing and I actually got bit about 15 feet down the bank where I'm sitting right now and I actually missed that fish. I set the hook and I missed that fish, but I put the brakes on. I stopped and I really started picking this little area apart. And guess what? I got to this lay down, which is really, really small right there. And I caught a small fish. And then I decided to pick it apart even further. I flipped there in the exact same lay down and I actually ended up missing another fish. So that was literally three bites in about 20 feet. That's it, three bites in 20 feet. So anytime you get bit while flipping and pitching wood cover, put the brakes down, slow down, pick that area apart because more than likely, if there's one bass, there's a lot of bass. Now, speaking of catching multiple fish in an area, the fifth mistake that a lot of anglers make is not completely picking a lay down apart. I truly believe that anytime you're flipping wood cover, you should really start from the outside of that lay down and work to the inside. Now, I do believe there are a lot of situations where the biggest bass is on the inside of that lay down, but you can actually catch multiple fish in a small lay down by really kind of picking it apart, starting from the outside and working in. If your first pitch is actually on the inside of a lay down and you set the hook and you get that fish hung up and you have to go in there and crash into that lay down, you're probably gonna scare every single fish away that is in that area. So start from the outside, work inside, and that can really help you to catch a lot more bass in a lay down. Now, one thing I find to be extremely important when you are fishing in shallow water, especially when you're flipping and pitching, is the way that you use your trolling motor. And I actually explain this a little bit more in this video right here, where I talk about flipping mistakes that we kind of all make that aren't just for wood cover, but for everything. So if you guys enjoyed this video, I think you'll enjoy this one as well. Don't forget to check out the Deep Dive app, and I'll see you guys in the next video.